Welcome back to the chapter 15 revision video and this is going to be fun. First question here. You see we got a right angle triangle. The moment you have a right angle triangle you know you're going to have one or two things you can do. Right. If we're working with the sides, like I give you two sides, you want to know a third side, you need to use Pythagoras. The moment there's an angle evolved, then you're going to use so, ka, toa. Right, and that's what's going on here. If we've got an angle there, we know we're going to use so, ka, toa. As always, we need to label the triangle. Now, the hypotenuse is this one over here. We don't have it, and we don't want it, so we're not going to use the hypotenuse. What we're going to use here is the adjacent and the opposite. The O and the A. So that means we use the ton ratio. So we write down ton and then always after the ratio comes the angle. First in the ratio is the O, which is the opposite, which in this case is just an H. Second and to A is the adjacent, which we have here, which is 16. So to find the H, we just need to rearrange the divide by 16 becomes times 16 on the other side of the equation so to find h we need to type that into our calculator 16 done 31 and it gives us 9.6137 so h equals 9.6137 etc yeah round that off to three significant figures 9.61 centimeters right this one oddly is three marks so you probably get one mark for using the correct ratio one mark for rearranging it and then the final answer there Next question, once again, we have a, a right angle triangle, and once again, we have an angle involved. So, once again, we'll be looking at so, ka, toa. Right, let's label this one. This side here is the hypotenuse, as it is right across from the 90 degree angle, and this one is the opposite, as it is opposite the angle. This one here will be adjacent, but it's not one we have, it's not one we need. So, using the O and the A, we're going for saw this time. So again, we write sin, then the angle, which is X in this case. Then first is the O, which means the opposite, which will be the 7, go atop. And then is the hypotenuse, which is the 9, goes at the bottom. So this time we need to move the sin across, comes the inverse, and that will be 7 over 9, which we put into our calculator. Okay, shift, sin, fraction, 7 over 9, close it. And we get a 51.0575. Okay, now angles, then we would like probably have to round it to one decimal place, and that being a five means we'll round it up to a one. So we get 51.1 degrees. Okay, this one just uh, more reasonable, two marks. Okay, so you'll get one mark here for using the correct sin ratio and one mark for the correct answer. Question three starts with another ship because this has been cut from a, a question where there was a first part. But anyway, sails from port P to port Q. From port P. So right from here, it sails, you see, it sails in that direction there. It then sails from port Q to port R. So then it goes that way. Find the angle R, R, P, Q. So R, P, Q would be this angle here now this is a straightforward question so angles in a triangle that would be 180 
minus the two angles we have 67 and 84 yeah different ways to work so that's 29 degrees okay one mark only for the correct answer obviously okay now let's clear the clutter here and let's write in what we have we have there the obviously 29 for this angle here find the bearing of port p from port r see there's a from port r means we are over here okay off port p which means we're going in this direction so bearings being zero degrees north going clockwise this is the angle that we need to work out okay and there will be different ways to do this okay many different ways you might find your own way okay popular way might be let's get a different color here is to see to see this angle here together 43 plus 29 is of course uh, 52 72 degrees okay now if we take in consideration that here we got two parallel lines yeah parallel lines and if we extend this line here we have here corresponding angles okay if you remember parallel lines like this forms an f that's parallel then the f angles corresponding angles will be the same which means this one over here is 72 okay now all we're missing is the bottom part here which of course is a straight line that's 180 the so calculation here would be 180 plus 72 to give us a bearing of 252 degrees which makes sense even though it's not to scale a uh, dead west would be 270 so that's just slightly less than that and we got a good answer there question four sketch the graph of cos x okay for this we're gonna get our pencil out Okay, now if you forget what the graph of cos x looks like, we can always type it in. We can do cos uh, 0 degrees, and that gives us a 1, so that might remember us that the cos graph starts there at 1. Okay, we can do cos 45 degrees, that gives us 0 0.7. So 45 degrees, of course, will be here. So 0 0.7 would be around about uh, somewhere there. Okay, so as cos 90 will give us then 0. All right, and we can continue like that. Cos 180 gives us minus 1, which is over there. Cos 270 gives us zero again so 270 goes to zero and cos 360 but I'm sure by now you've got this uh, cos 360 yeah it gives us one again yeah okay so that means we're gonna go like this nice smooth curve okay get your marks here it needs to be clear that the graph goes through 90 and 270 starts at 1 ends at 360 at 1 again and you get your mark okay next one as the dog barks and chaos breaks out around here solve the equation of cos x equals a half okay so we got the cost graph there we got a half which is over there so you can already see if we go across from there and go down we should get an answer right about there let's see what our calculator says so we rearrange this we move the cost to the other side that means x would be cost minus one 
0 0.5 so let's put that in right cos minus 1 0 0.5 yep that gives us 60 degrees so x equals 60 degrees and it's an answer between 0 and 360 so that's one answer and that tells us this point here that is 60 degrees where it crosses okay now can you see this whole thing of course is symmetrical so if we continue straight from there on this graph use your ruler we go down there will be another answer round about here between 270 and 360 now the distance here from 0 to 60 obviously that's 60 degrees so the distance here will be 60 degrees so to get the other answer we need to do 360 minus 60 is 300 degrees we can check if that is correct if we type in okay like we said one answer is cos 60 if we type into our calculator cos 60 see we get 0 0.5 that's why one answer is 60. If we put in cos 300, what do we get? Bam, yeah, we get a half again. So that definitely means the other answer is 300 degrees. Okay, not a lot here. One mark for each correct answer. Next one, the ton graph. Again, if you forget what it looks like, put it into your calculator. Okay, let's do ton zero. That means the ton graph will go through zero. So it will start there. Okay, if we put ton 90, we get error. So it's not going to cross that 90 degree line. So you can put something else in, yeah? We can put ton 45, so you see it's 1, it's positive. So you might remember the form of the ton graph, it goes something like this. Okay, make sure it doesn't cross that 90 degree line. Okay, if you then put, uh, say, ton 180, get 0. Okay, if you're not sure where it goes from there, put something between 90 and 180. What, 135 is halfway, isn't it? So it's a negative. So you know it comes around from the negative, goes to positive, and it goes again like that. All right. Try to memorize it as well. So 270, of course, will be another asymptote. Okay. Now we pretty much have the shape of the graph. Yeah, it goes like that. Make sure you don't curve away. Okay. From the line, make sure you don't cross the lines of the asymptotes okay you understand what I'm saying let me show you a few that would be wrong okay if you were to uh, cross the line of 270 or 90 okay that would be wrong you'd lose a mark if you were to curve back okay some people do this sort of laziness okay they draw it and then they curve back. That's wrong, of course. Okay, you will lose a mark. Make sure it is correct. Right, going smoothly towards the line, getting closer but never touching it. Okay, so for everything perfect here, you get two marks. Any silly mistakes, crossing the asymptote, not going through 180 there or zero, you could lose a mark. Okay, next one again, tell you to solve it. There's a bit more involved here with solving it. Okay, there's a two there. So first, let's write this down. Okay, we are going to divide the two on the other side. So that gives us ton x equals 3 over 2 and then move the ton, so that gives us x, that's an arrow by the way, the inverse of ton, ton minus 1, 3 over 2. Okay, so rearranging, solving that equation, we press shift, ton, fraction, 
three over two, close the bracket, and we get an answer there. X is 56.309. Okay, remember this is an angle, we're going to round it to one decimal place, 56.3. Okay. So, let's have a look. We need to find the other answer. Okay, so here we have tan x equals 3 over 2, which is like 1 and a half. Okay, so we can just, uh, the 1 and a half will be above 0 anywhere here. Let's, let's just assume that's 1 and a half. Okay, so when we went across, the calculator gave us that first answer, which was 56.3, right? So this is 56.3 which is less than 90, which makes sense. So if we keep going from a half, we get over here, we go down, we say the next answer would be somewhere between 180 and 270. Okay, there are many ways to get here, but uh, with the ton graph, you see a ton graph repeats itself every 180 degrees. Then you're exactly the same place where you've been before. Yeah, you see that? 180 degrees, you're at zero, you're at zero again. So it's the same for the whole thing. So this distance here would be 180 degrees. So all we need to do is do 56.3 plus 180 degrees. What would that be? 236.3. Let's check if it works, okay? So we add the one answer, ton uh, 56.3, right? That should give us roughly three over two or a half. So let's see, ton 56.3. Yeah, very close to 1.5. So ton 236.3 should give us the same roughly very close to 1.5 since we used a rounded answer yep there we go so we know uh, that is the right answer 236.3 remember here okay degrees that we round angles always, always to one decimal place. You see, I got four significant figures there. Okay, so probably one mark you get here for rearranging it, and then one mark for each correct answer. Three marks. Question six, and now we get the sun graph. Okay, get the pencil out. Okay, and we. Can now, if you forget what the sin graph looks like, we start by putting sin zero, and that zero sin graph starts at zero as well. Okay, sin 90, one. So up here, when sin is 90, it will be one. Okay, you can keep doing that, and it will show you the whole thing. Now it's an 80, we go down. I think by now you know what it's going to look like, but you can always just test it. 270 we're at minus one so it goes down okay and of course then it goes up again so smooth wave curve with a pencil freehand there we go make sure it's clear it goes through zero at zero 180 and 360 to get your marks there oh well in this case I just counts one mark so any small mistake can make you lose that mark Again, they ask us to solve us, find all the solutions, okay, for sin x equals minus 0.6, so we move that to the other side, so that sin minus 1 minus 0.6, okay, and let's put that into the calculator, come, come, there we go, right, shift sin minus 1, negative, Ooh. 0.6 close the bracket and we get the answer minus 36.869 which we can say is minus 
Okay, now be careful here, right? Where is that? Where is minus 36.9 degrees? Okay, first of all, you need to note that that is not between 0 and 360. So that is not one of the possible answers we can write on the line. Okay, where is that? So minus 0 0.6 here would be roughly about there. And then if we continue the graph, okay, this way, that's a bit ugly. All right, yeah, something like this, yeah. That means if we go from minus 0 0.6, we go here, which continues this line, then minus 36.9 degrees will be there. That's the answer the calculator gives us. The one that's not between 0 and 360. One way over there. Okay, where does the other answers lie? Well, if we go the opposite direction, there, there's going to be one answer there between 180 and 270. Now we keep going across and down. Another answer between 270 and 360. Okay, now remember, all of this is symmetrical. So this distance here is 36.9 from there to zero. Then this distance here will be 36.9. Okay, and this distance here will be 36.9. Fine, so to find one answer, okay, we need to do, as you can see here, 180 plus 36.9. So let's do that, 180 plus 36.9. That will, of course, give us 216.9. So we can check if that's the correct answer, degrees. So sin... 216.9, what does that give us? Sin, 216.9 degrees. Minus 0 0.6, very close, of course we rounded the angle, it's not exact, but it's definitely close enough. So that's one correct answer. 216.9 degrees. For the other one, over here, we need to do 360 minus, because we're going to the left of 360, minus 36.9. So we're going to do 360 minus 36.9. What does that give us? Uh, 360 minus 36.9. 323.1 degrees. Let's see. Let's test if that is correct. So 323.1 degrees. Is are giving us very close to uh, 23.1, close the bracket. Yes, rounded, definitely minus 0 0.6. So that is the other correct answer. 323.1 degrees. Okay, so there we go. Two answers that is between 0 and 360 degrees. Okay. Obvious the marks here, you might get this angle here, one mark, but getting the two correct ones is one mark each, three marks. Isn't this getting a lot of fun? Okay, here we go. Question seven, we got a triangle, and this triangle has got stuff, and we need to work out other stuff, but what you need to notice is it's not a right angle triangle, so we cannot use Pythagoras, and we cannot use Sokatua. In a triangle that is not a right angle triangle, the moment you have an angle and the opposite side like this, then you can use the same rule. Do we have? We only got the angle here, but we do not have the opposite side, so that means we cannot use the sin rule. The only other option then is the cos rule. Okay, if we have two sides and the angle in between, yep, that's when we use a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. 
By the way, if it was a triangle that's not a right triangle and we got three sides, that's when you will use the other version of the course rule, which is course A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. Okay, but as the cookie crumbles, we're going to use this one since we have two angles, two sides, and the angle in between. Okay, let's clear up this clutter. So we can continue. Right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to leave that either. So calculate PQ. So we want to calculate that side there. So we can relabel this triangle that fancies us, right? We want to work out a side. Let's make this lowercase a, which makes this uppercase a. And then on this could be in any order b and c which we can swap around doesn't matter okay so let's write down that formula a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a now we've just said the a is going to be this line pq right pq to save time i'm going to move the square to the other side so that becomes square root. We said B is 8.4, C is 7.6. We write that again. Don't be lazy, extend this line. Everything is being square rooted. And then cos and the angle. And that's what we put into our calculator. So here we go square root 84 square plus 7.6 square Let's see i forgot to put the square there don't forget that minus 2 times 8.4 times 7.6 cos 62 okay equals 83.987 right something is wrong something is wrong because you see this is 8.4 7.6 that can't be 83 yeah definitely i made a mistake always think does my answer make sense no right if this is 7.6 and that's 8.4 that line can't be 83 Okay, and it's clear why I'm wrong, because I forgot to put this decimal point. That's why it helps to think, does my answer make sense? That makes sense, 8.269. So this is wrong, 8.2, see that doesn't point disappears every time I write. 8.269, okay, etc. Rounded to three significant figures, that's a nine, so it's going to be 8.27 centimeters well done well done so then the area of the triangle of course that is the formula uh, half a b c c so for that we can relabel the triangle any way we want okay the angle you have will always be c which makes this lowercase c, which makes the other two sides, a and b, in any order. Okay, so for this, really, for this formula, again, you just need to have two sides and the angle in between, and that angle will be uppercase c, and the two sides will be a and b in any order. So let's do that then. So half, one side here we got 7.6. The other side, 8.4. Send C. Put that into our calculator. Uh, you could put a half like that if you want. 7.6. 8.4. Send. What's the angle again? 20, 62. Equals gives us 28.183 if 
you're going to round it, three significant figures. So that's an eight. We're going to round that up to a two, 28.2 centimeters square. Uh, here we go now. Question eight. This one looks big. Just break this down into little parts. Okay. They tell us this is a quadrilateral, four sided shape, A, B, C, D. Tell us this is 77, B, C is 55, no, B, no, no, B, C is 120, A, B is 55, C, D is 60. You read through it and diagonal A, C is 55. Oh, yeah, okay. Angle C, A, D is 45. There we got the angle. So you read through all this information very carefully. Calculate the value of x. Okay. So what you need to recognize here is, of course, right, there is no right angle triangle. So you're not going to use Pythagoras. And you're not going to use Sokatua. Those are out of the question. What we're going to have to go for is the formulas we use for uh, non right angle triangles. First of all, if we have an angle and the opposite side, then we can use the sun rule. Okay, and there's a very clear example of that here. So for this triangle, ADC, we can use the sun rule to find other angles or other sides. Okay. The other option is if we have a triangle of what we got the angle there and the two sides next to it, all right, we can use the cos rule. Do we have an example of that? Well, on this one we don't. Okay. Third option is if we have three sides of a triangle, we can work out any angle by using the other version of the cos rule. Well, you can use it using the first version as well, but this one is a little bit easier. And there we got a clear example in this triangle here, ABC. We have three sides. That means we can work out the angle X. Okay, so let's clear the clutter. Okay, I'm not going to use that one for now. Right, so let's get started. All right, let's clear that as well. Okay, so since we got here three sides of a triangle, we want to find an angle, we're going to use this version of the cos rule. Cos A equals B squared plus C squared minus A squared over 2BC. So what's A, B, and C? Well, they have luckily labeled this triangle for us correctly. This is A, okay, so the lowercase a is there. Uh, this is B here, so lowercase b is here, and lowercase c is there. Not that it matters which way around b and c is. So if we want to find a, which is x, so let's change that for x degrees. We're going to move that cos across, which become cos minus 1. Then we put the b, which is 55 squared c 77 squared and then a which is 120 squared by the way we can swap around the 55 and the 77 but the 120 has to be the one that's opposite the angle so don't get that wrong okay and then the 55 and 77 below the line in any order okay so let's hammer that into our calculator started by pressing shift Cos minus 1, make it a fraction. 55 squared plus 77 squared 
minus 120 squared. Below the line, we've got 255 and 77. Close the brackets. There we go, 130.014. And in this case, round it, an angle to one decimal place, 130.0. Okay, or just a nice sweet 130. Now that went well. Okay. Uh, now we're going to work out. Let's change slightly the color. Okay. Next one, calculate the value of y. Now, as I said before, the moment you have an angle on the opposite side, we're going to go for the sin rule. If you want to work out an angle, like here, it might be better if you use the other version of the sin rule, where we put the sin above, where the angle is in the top left. It just makes it easier when we rearrange the whole thing. So I'm going to use that, sin A over A equals sin B over B. A now being the angle we want. So we change that, that's our A, okay? So that would be sin Y, okay, over the side that is opposite. So now this is not B anymore. We've we've made it a little lowercase a now. Okay, so the angle and the opposite side always goes together. Then we got sin B. B would now we've changed this now. This is now our B. Okay. 45. And with B goes the opposite there, which is opposite that. That is now our lowercase b, which is 60. So we just need to rearrange this. Okay. First, we're going to multiply the 55 there. That means we've got sin y equals 55 times sin 45 over 60. Okay. And before I type in calculator, I'm going to move this sin as well. That means y would be sin minus 1, 55, sin 45, over 60. Let's put that into the calculator. Make sure you got all the brackets in the right place. And that gives us y equals 40.404. Four six. Okay, and this being uh, an angle once again, rounded to one decimal place. Nice. Yeah. Oh, we didn't look at marks and all of this. Forgot about looking at the marks. Yeah. For the first one here, probably uh, get two marks for using the cost rule correctly one mark for rearranging it correctly and one mark for the correct answer it's a lot of marks there where this one is just two marks probably for using the center rule correctly and then getting the answer it's weird how they award the marks but anyway last question all right before we do the last question let's clear the clutter here let's clear okay We've got a lot of writing now don't need all of that Okay, use your pencil. Well, you want an exam, you might want to leave some of your information on there because you never know, it can give you marks, but uh, I don't want to keep it a mess. Let's just write in what we do have, okay? So we do have X is 130, and we do have Y, which is 40.4. Okay, so remember that, we got those two. Next, the bearings. So we've got bearings now. Of D from A is 90 degrees. Of D from A, right? So let's get our pencil out. 
from A, means we're at A, we're going to draw a straight line up, that's north, that's zero degrees. That means the bearing here is 90 degrees, so I mean going this way, that's 90 degrees. It means D is dead east from A. Okay, and that obviously means that angle there is 45, okay. So C is dead northeast. Okay. Find the bearing of A from C. Okay, A from C. So it means we're at C. Let's draw a straight line going up from there. That would be north. And we're going towards A. So we need to find this here. Okay. Interesting. Going clockwise, of course, like bearings always do. What angles there can we find? Let's have a look. Okay. Now, there's a lot of ways to do this. We can work out this angle here, but I immediately think more of in the lines of, we got two parallel lines, that's the north line. Got this angle here is 45. Then remember, if we extend that line, that will be 45. So that means these two angles, angles on a straight line is 180. Or just remember that co-interior angles, these two angles together, is 180. So with 180 minus 45, we have this angle here is 135. That means this angle, let's change color. Okay, this angle here is 135. So what would be the bearing, of course? The bearing is going clockwise, the other angle there, and yes, you got it. We need to do 360 minus 135. What's that going to be? Uh, 225. Yes. And that's the answer. Okay. So, be sharp here, right? Obviously, the red correct answer gives you a mark, but they might award any other marks here for having a correct angle anywhere, all right? So write these down in the in your uh, thing there. Find any angle you can. Right, last one. B from A. From A, okay. Let's just clear a bit of the clutter again. Uh, so wait now. Ah, too much clutter clearance there for my liking. Okay, so we have this is the... What was this, 235? No, 225. What's this one here? Okay. Of B from A. I'm going to use it. Ridiculous color. Okay. So, from A, we're at A. We need to find the bearing of B. B is there. So, this means we're going to go all the way around. Okay. All the way around. What would that be? Okay, already I see a lot of options here. Okay, remember that this angle here is 130. And we got that 45. We do 130 minus 45. What is that? Uh, uh, 85. So that means, let's change colors again. This angle here. No, 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 no. This angle here is 85. 85 plus 45, 130. Okay, easy stuff. So that could only be one thing we need to do now. 360 minus 85. What is that? Uh, 280, 275. So that means, yeah. That angle going around, we just got this for 275. Makes sense. That would be 270 dead west. Okay. There is, of course, other ways to do this. Okay. Again, yes, yeah, so be, be very uh, accurate here. You get a mark obviously, for the right answer, but there's been two marks. I mean, you could probably get a mark for that or anything. Any other angles you put in there? You never know. So 
find as many angles as possible. Question nine. What a marathon has been. Okay, look at this. Question nine. A three-dimensional shape. A triangular prism. A, B, C, D. Is flat on the ground. Horizontal rectangle, yeah? D, A is 10. This is this line in the front. A, B is 5 on the side. Go for every piece of information. B, C, Q, P. Vertical rectangle. B, C. That's there at the back. With BP being 6. You see there on the side, we've got 6 centimeters. Right. Calculate the length of DP. Let's get going. Okay. DP. DP goes from D to P. That's that line. Okay. That forms part of this triangle here. You see that? Okay. Of course, in this triangle, this is a 90 degree angle. Okay, let's draw that. This triangle. It's got D, P, and this corner there's A. And in this triangle, we only have one piece of information that is 10 centimeters there. Gonna need more information. Okay, so I'm looking at where there is more information. We go here. Yeah, you go. You see that? This triangle on the side, we got a lot of information there. Okay, that triangle, let's keep it the same color roughly. Okay, that triangle there is also a right angle triangle, and we got the five and the six. Okay, and this is triangle by the way A, B, P. Yeah, same P is there. The same AP is there. See, this AP is the same AP as that AP. Okay, and we got right angle triangles working with the sides. Of course, that's going to be the one and only Pythagoras. So let's start with this one, right? Pythagoras rule for this, since this is the hypotenuse, would be uh, AP squared equals AB squared. plus BP squared. So that means AP will be the square root. AB, remember here, was 5. And PB was 6. So let's put that in the calculator. Uh, square root 5 squared plus 6 squared. Bam. Square root 61. I mean, we can write on 7.8102496766. But it's a lot accurate, more accurate, just to leave it as square root 61. I mean, that is the most accurate answer. So if this is square root 61, that means this here is square root 61, which is there, square root 61. Okay. So now we got, in this green triangle, we got two sides. And now we can find DP. So we do the same. The Pythagoras rule for dp is dp squared equals um, the base there, ad squared, plus the side there, ap squared. So dp equals square root ad being 10 squared, and ap being the square root of 61, squared see what's happening there that should just be 61 but anyway let's put that in our calculator so square root 10 squared plus the square root of 61 remember to move out from underneath the square root by pressing the arrow okay because if you don't see I'm still trapped that line there is still over there so be careful there move away squared but if you know stuff you know that the square root squared is just 61 so we can just put in 61 with all that nonsense now this is the final answer so now we're going to write the full answer 12.68 12 12.6885 etc 
rounded to three significant figures. That is an eight, so it's going to be 12.7 centimeters. Now, I don't know if some of you have picked this up. Some of you have seen this, but there's a lot quicker way to do this. All right, if you're doing Pythagoras and three dimensions, you could have just done this. You could have said, fine, dp is the square root of 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 10 squared. Three dimensional, okay. It comes down to if we got the width, the length, and the height, and we want to find a diagonal, okay, you could have just done that. But you need to remember how it works. 5 squared plus 6 squared plus 10 squared. Bam. Gives us the same answer. Okay. Maybe you've seen that already. All right. Either way, doing that will give you full marks straight away. Or, obviously here, doing Pythagoras correct once, uh, twice, and then getting the right answer. Last question. Okay. Let's... Uh, Remember what was the answer? The answer? Square root 161. Let's just throw that away. It's always useful to have the fully correct answer. Okay, so let's clear a few of these things here. We had that side of square root 61, and we got this side of square root 161. Very interesting. Okay, this is the information we have so far in the shape. Okay, we now have to work the angle between DP, we just worked out DP, and the horizontal rectangle ABCD. The horizontal rectangle ABCD being the whole bottom here. Yeah, this is the rectangle at the bottom. Okay. Struggling to get into those corners, but anyway, yeah, this rectangle and this line here, okay, so it's kind of like the angle between a plane and a line. But to do that, we can draw another line here, okay, that's it on the plane, and that gives us a triangle where we can work with. And this is the angle we need to work out, this one over here. So let's draw it over here. So we've got like a triangle like this. It's called triangle P at the top, D at the bottom. That's DP we've been talking about, and B there. What information do we have? Well, we know it's a right angle triangle. Okay. Uh, we just worked this out, the square root 161, and we got there 6. Okay. Brilliant. We've got a right angle triangle. We've got two sides and we want to know an angle, so there's only one thing to do here. So ka toa. Okay, let's get going. Let's see, what do we have, right? We want to know this angle. Let's label the sides. This is the adjacent. We're not using it. We're not? No. All right, this is the opposite. We've got that, and this is the hypotenuse. So we got O and H. O and H, we're back to so, so, so. So that's what we're going to write down here. We're going to start with sin. The angle. We need to label the angle. What are we going to call the angle? Do we call it X? Any other X's around? No, let's call the angle X. That's the angle X. All right. Then we need to put equals the opposite, which is 6. Angle X, the opposite is 6, because the O is first. You see, O is first, so that goes at the top, the O. And then the hypotenuse, which we have very accurately, a square root 161. Most probably, okay. But in this case, they'll be lenient if you use the rounded answer. They will be, but we've got to be 100% accurate. So we just need to move the sin to the other side. So we've got x equals sin minus 1, 6 over square root 161. Gives us x equals, uh, let's do that, uh, the inverse of sin. 
6 over square root 161 bracket close the bracket bam 28.2205 that is the most accurate answer it's an angle so we round it to one decimal place 28.2 degrees okay so marks here definitely they give you one mark for recognizing oh, I want red for recognizing the correct angle one mark for using a correct ratio one mark for the correct final answer okay now wasn't that a lot of fun I'm sure I made a mistake let me know all my mistakes I've made yeah, if you can spot mistakes you are a genius if you get all right you're a genius either way work hard and you'll become a genius see you again soon